Well, hello everyone. I'm Tyler Hogan from Bright Ideas Press, and with me today is Susan Barton, and we're here to chat a little bit about North Star geography. Now, Susan, you and your son Noah did North Star this past year, right? We did. It was his eighth grade year, and we dove into a very serious study with you of geography. So what drew you to North Star? Well, Noah has a particular interest in history and politics. And while we knew that we wanted to brush up on our awareness of cartography and where things are on the planet, we also realized that it's important to understand why, where things are, but how other things in geography affect history and affect politics and how all of the aspects that we'll talk about in a little bit, how all of these aspects of geography impact the other things that we study. So before we launch into our high school years, it really provided a framework to put all of our other disciplines. That's excellent. Yeah, being able to see how all of those things fit together and all the different elements of geography, that's super important. And North Star was one of the only places, even if I wasn't at Bright Ideas Press, North Star was the only real curriculum resource I could find that brought all of the components of geography into one study. So I have a sneaking suspicion, I know the answer to this question, but if you could share with all of us, what was your inspiration for writing North Star? Well, so a couple of years back, my wife and I were teaching homeschool co-ops uh, for our local homeschool group, and we wanted to do a geography class. And as you said, I, I was looking around for a curriculum and I couldn't find the one that I wanted because there's so many different elements of geography. It can kind of be an overwhelming topic and a lot of people don't even know where to start. So uh, North Star was written to cover what I think are the three essential components. And the first is geography skills. So that covers things like how to read a map, how to use an atlas, uh, understanding cartography and surveying and geographers tools, um, learning navigation, uh, how to use a compass, how to uh, get around using a GPS, you know, whether it's old or new technology, that's all geography skills. And that's just essential life knowledge, I think. Uh, the second unit is on physical geography. And this has a lot of overlap with like earth sciences. Mm -hmm. So we cover uh, the four spheres. So that's uh, the lithosphere, which is all of the rock in the earth from the core all the way out to the crust, uh, including like tectonic plates and volcanoes and that sort of thing. We cover the hydrosphere, which is all of the water on earth, whether it's in the oceans or icebergs or rivers and streams and lakes or clouds. Uh, the third sphere is the atmosphere. So we, we do our weather and climate studies. And then lastly is the biosphere. So flora and fauna, habitat, ecology, uh, understanding how humans and plants and animals interact with their physical environment, that sort of thing. So like I said, a lot of overlap with earth science, but it's all essential geography as well. And then the third unit, so you've got geography skills, physical geography. The third unit is human geography. And this is where you have, you know, your cultural studies, uh, language, transportation, um, architecture, agriculture, government, politics, philosophy, all of those different aspects of who we are as people and, and how, uh, how people from region to region are different, how they're the same, why we settle, where we settle, how these cities got built and population density, you know, all that fun stuff, that's, that's all human geography. So those three core strands, um, I, I found lots of materials that would cover, you know, one or maybe one and a half, but I didn't find anything that had all of that together. So that, that's what inspired North Star is I wanted my kids uh, in my co-op and in my own children to have a, a well-rounded geographic literacy that would help them, you know, no matter what their career is, but just to understand the world around them, how it works, why these processes are going on and the impact that it has on people's lives. As many things as you just listed, I can attest to the fact that we covered all of it <laughs> and we have that framework now. It's impressive. That was a lot of groundwork to cover. 
<laughs> I mean, there's a lot of material in North Star. We, we try to be really thorough and, and make it um, not just the, the big picture, but, you know, bring it down to interesting case studies and, you know, even just the, the practical elements of how to love your neighbor, you know, especially if they're from a different culture, region, ethnicity than yourself understanding human geography helps you love your neighbor better. So there, it's, it's a really, I think, a very practical program. It's true. So speaking of the practicality of the program and covering all of these things, can we take a look at what North Star looks like? So if, if someone's not familiar with the Bright Ideas Press formula, we have a tendency to have a student reader and a companion guide. Can, can you show all of us what that breakdown looks like in content? Sure. So here, here's some pages from the student reader. Uh, the reader is just your lesson text. So there's 16 lessons covering all the topics that we just mentioned. Um, there, it's a beautiful hardback, full color, illustrated. Uh, there's all kinds of fantastic photography, maps, charts, graphs, historical images. It, it's a, a beautiful thing to read, which if you've got a visual learner, that's, that's a really important element. Um, so as you go through and read the lessons, there's, uh, there's usually three sections to each lesson, so you can break it down uh, depending on, on your time per day. Uh, and then the other important component is the companion guide. And the companion guide has everything else that really makes it a curriculum. So here's a, a screenshot of the companion guide interface. When you buy the book, you get a download version of the companion guide. It's, uh, it's a little code that will be on the front of your book that's unique to you. So it comes with the reader. Um, and it's got all of these different pieces to it. So you've got your schedules, and that'll just let you know, here's a sample of what a week would look like or, or planning out your whole year, whether you're doing it in one year or uh, cramming it into one semester or spreading it out over two years. There's a schedule for all of those options. And then uh, you start getting into some of the different curriculum components. And, and I want to point out, all of these are optional. They're up to you as the parent to pick and choose which ones you want to use. Uh, so first off, we have the activity directions. And these are, these are like the fun hands-on projects and experiments and models and um, experiences that I think are, are such a, a fun and unique part of this program. Um, well, Susan, what, what were some of Noah's favorite activities that you guys did? Oh, we loved those. That was, we, uh, we decided to do, uh, pick one activity for each lesson. Um, his favorite, even though we just indicated that, you know, we're headed into high school next year and he's a big eighth grader, guys still love food. So his favorite activity was creating his own continent and he designed country flags and emblems and we um, baked a, a gigantic cookie continent and he, iced it. Dough maps. <laughs> he, he had like colored coded topography and uh, country borders. And so that was a lot With of fun. icing and sprinkles and stuff. Yeah, it was great for all of us. <laughs> That's awesome. We had a great time. We also did, um, we created a compass and um, he created a water vortex. He learned how to calculate GPS coordinates by hand. So he was figuring out the latitude and longitude of home. Um, there were just so many hands-on things that we enjoyed together as a family, not just Noah as the student. That's excellent. Yeah, I love the activity directions. There, there's at least three different options for each lesson in the text, but again, don't try and do it all. <laughs> there's way more in here than any one family should accomplish. Yes. Just pick and choose the things that are going to be most interesting and engaging and, and helpful for you. Uh, so next up we have Atlas Building. This is one of my personal favorites. Um, each, each lesson you're given a region of the world and you get to make a couple of different kinds of maps. So you make a, a political map, you make a physical map, and then you have a couple of different options of thematic maps that you can make. So that might be population density or a, uh, a biome map or a historical map from a particular era. Um, and by the time you finished out the year, you've built all of these maps by hand and you have your own personal atlas that you've created. And just that, 
that act of researching and transcribing the information from your atlas or whatever source you're using onto your own piece of paper by hand, that transfer helps build a strong familiarity with where everything is in the world. And I, I think that's just so valuable. We can attest to that retention element there because going into this, one of the reasons we first decided that we needed to take a look at a strong geography curriculum is to have that retention of where things are on the planet. And by the time we finished, I asked Noah the other day if he felt confident in his geography skills for an achievement test going into high school. And he said, oh yeah. He said, well, you know, if you ask me about like maybe a really tiny South American country or something, it might take me a minute. So I was very <laughs> impressed with his uh, confidence in being able to identify countries and landmarks. That's excellent. Uh, so next in the companion guide, we've got note-taking pages. And those are, there's 10 questions on each page, one for each lesson. And you can either use them as a review, you know, towards the end of the week to go back and, and review the lesson, or you can have your students practice their note-taking skills and have them fill out the page as they're reading the lesson. And whichever way you do it, it, it becomes their study sheet for the quiz. The quizzes are composed of two parts. One is basically the note-taking page, and the other is pulled from the memorization list. Now, the memorization list is, uh, by the end of the year, you'll have memorized the locations of every country on Earth. So each week, you take a, a different chunk of the planet, and you memorize a certain set of countries so that you can find them on a blank outline map. And that, again, that's just a, a familiarity building exercise. Um, if you're doing atlas building, you probably don't need to do both, but if you're not doing atlas building, it's a great way to just make sure that they're spending time in those atlases learning the major places around the world. And then if you've got your note-taking page and your memorization done, then you're prepared for the quiz and there's a, an answer key for each of those quizzes. Um, so just trying to, to finish up here, we've got research questions and an answer key for those research questions. And this is especially geared for high schoolers. So uh, North Star Geography is a solid high school credit for sure. And the research questions gives your kids some kind of open-ended avenues for pursuing their own independent study. Um, there's answers, so if you don't have time to do a particular question or set of questions, you can always just read the answers because they're, they're interesting and informative. Um, but that's just a really useful way to help your kids develop their independent learning mode. Uh, next, we have the glossary. There's a lot of great vocabulary when you're studying geography, and this is a, a convenient <laughs> place to, to keep it all in case you forget what something means. Uh, we talked about the quizzes. There's also a final exam. And then there's outline maps and reference maps. The outline maps have no labels on them. So if you're doing uh, your atlas building or you're wanting to quiz yourself for your memorization list, those are really useful. They're also, I think, sometimes used in the activity directions. And then the reference maps have all of the places already filled in and labeled for you. And these are all of the maps that you need in order to do the program. But if you want, there's other resources that you can pull in. You can bring in you know, a, a paper atlas that's you know, up to date and, and has an appropriate level of detail. Um, there's online resources aplenty. And then there's wonder maps, which is my personal favorite, but I'm, I'm hugely biased because that's, that's one of my babies. Um, wonder maps has all of the maps that you'll want in order to really have fun studying geography. So uh, what you need is in the companion guide, uh, but Wonder Maps has, has the, the other maps that you'll want to have too. Um, and then towards the end here, we've got graphic organizers, which include things like uh, fact files for continents and countries. And again, those are uh, independent study, research oriented. That's one of the few things that we don't provide an answer key for because we want students to have to, to research and kind of grapple with some of the ambiguity and, and uh, inconsistency with statistics and, and be able to figure out how they're going to get their answers and how they're going to justify them. Like if you're asked, well, what's the biggest river in the world? You know, maybe you're going to 
say it's the Nile? Maybe you're gonna say it's the Amazon. Are you talking about biggest by volume of water or, or longest or you know what what's the criteria here and so we don't give answer keys for that partly because you know an answer key that had every country's fact file is going to go out of date like that um, but mostly because we want them to build that independent study mindset and then lastly here we have the the grading rubric and report card and the rubric is just to help you assign grades to some of those things that might seem a little bit more subjective like the hands-on projects and activities. Uh, and then the report card is actually an Excel file, which gives you um, a record of all of their progress through the year. And you can pick and choose which pieces you want the report card to include, and it'll calculate your grade based on that. So again, don't try and do everything, and the report card is built to, to make it easy <laughs> for you to calculate grades, no matter which pieces of the curriculum you're using at once. So that's kind of an overview of the companion guide. The reader is just the lesson text. The companion guide is what makes it a curriculum. And I tell you that report card was such a gift. When I opened that up, I was just sitting there thanking you in my living room for the fact that it was <laughs> so adaptable to the things that we decided we wanted to do this year. So we really appreciate having that tool ready made for us. <laughs> oh, good. I, I try and make things that I would want to use myself. Um, but speaking of, uh, of pieces that you use, tell us a little bit about what your average week looked like. Which pieces did you use with Noah? Well, we sat down at the beginning of the year and really looked at what our objective was for the course and what interested Noah once he saw what was included in the curriculum. So we decided that we were going to set up a very fluid two-week um, schedule. And we ended up uh, deciding we would spend two days on reading the lesson but in those two days of lesson reading, we also included our note taking. So it was an opportunity, it was really the first opportunity that Noah had a more structured note taking experience so that he's ready for that in the high school courses where we're dual enrolling or we have an online class that he's really able to discern the key points of information as he reviews a lesson. So that was two days. And then we decided we wanted to have one of those fun days of getting into all those great activities. So we had an activity day. Uh, he definitely wanted to create his own atlas and we ended up um, having an atlas day that uh, allowed him to have that outline map, but then we created layers with tracing paper on top of it where mm. he could choose other themes to put on top of that. We have a great custom atlas, Noah's atlas. By the time he's finished, it was great. Um, and then we still, on top of Atlas building, we had a memorization day where he spent time on those memorization lists. It was another way to study for the quiz. Um, so then once we had accomplished those three components of the memorization and note taking and activity, then we came back and had a day of review and a day of assessment. Um, but that allowed us to have at least one day in the school week in that two week time period to have a little bit of flex time in a cushion. Mm -hmm. That's so, so important. It really is to take that pressure off and, and to say, oh, well, I'd really like to work on this map longer this week, or this is a big activity and I'd really like to take more time making my cookie. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, we, we had, um, it was just enjoyable for both of us because we felt when we stepped into something that was of interest, we had the time to pay attention to it. That's so helpful. It was great. It was definitely a time where Noah could be independent in not only his, his learning time in the day, but what he was going to do that day. Because you know, it didn't have to be once you had read the lesson and taken your notes, you know, if you felt like sitting down quietly and working on an atlas, we did that in a day. But if you wanted to do an activity and we had all the supplies, then we turned to the activity so he could choose what he wanted to do in a day. He appreciated that. Yeah, that kind of autonomy is really helpful, especially as they're entering high school. Yeah. We were now, talking you did it just as a single family or did you participate in a co-op? No, we did it um, as a family, but I can tell you that we are getting a lot of calls from schools and co-ops and classrooms who are enjoying North Star too. So would you touch on that and how you designed it to be uh, optimal in both environments? Sure. Well, so I think I mentioned I developed originally for a co-op class. So I definitely had 
you know, groups doing these activities in mind. Um, but I knew most of our families were going to be doing it by themselves. So all of the activities are designed to either work really well as a group or individually uh, with, with a single student or, or a set of siblings. So both of those scenarios work just as well. Um, we also try and make things easy on our, on our co-op and classroom teachers. So like if, uh, if you as a teacher don't want all of your students to have access to say all of the answer keys, um, you can call our office and we'll be happy to get you a set of books that, uh, that don't have the download codes in them or uh, just, you know, keep keeping the kids honest to make sure that you as the teacher get to control what pieces of paper <laughs> flow through their hands. Uh, and then lastly, we also tried really hard to make sure that you didn't need to have a lot of additional materials. So like the activity directions, it's all simple stuff that you'd have around the house. It's not going to break the bank to try and buy uh, materials for these projects for, you know, 12 kids or anything like that. And the only materials that you would otherwise need aside from activity materials would be, you know, having atlases available, um, or, or wonder maps, and you can get co-op licenses for that too. Uh, and, and then the only other supplement that might be useful for some students would be, we have an audiobook version of the lesson text. And so if you've got auditory learners or children with dyslexia or learning challenges, or you just spend a lot of time in the car as a family, that's a great way to, to assist with the reading and just plowing through the material. Um, so that, but again, that's, that's not required. We just, we try to keep the requirements as simple and easy as possible. Well, and one of the things that you've um, highlighted here is the fact that when, when you, when you make something so flexible in the schedule that if, if you know that you have an activity coming up in North Star and you know that you need all those sprinkles and cookie dough and you know, toothpicks and fun things, it, it was flexible enough for us to take a look at it at the beginning of the day and we had a few days to, to get the things that we needed. So it's, it's definitely not something that you need to pour over an inventory list at the beginning of the year and check off all of these crazy, you know, you don't need to buy the <laughs> Yeah, or, or spend a lot of money trying to accomplish everything. Yeah, I mean, it, it just boils down to the fact that we trust parents to pick and choose things that are going to work well for their kids. Like, that's, that's it. We provide lots of options, you know, because we want to make sure there's something for every student, every learning style, you know, whatever your, your interests and bents are, we want to be able to appeal to that. Um, but it, you know, parents know their kids <laughs> and they'll be able to do a good job picking the right parts of the program to use. It's a great springboard if you are early in the process of turning your students loose on that independent learning too. There is enough structure in that dashboard, the interface of the companion guide to let your student drive their own learning um, and for you to really begin to take that role of advisor and let them have some autonomy in their week so that they decide how much research they do and they decide how much fun they take doing those activities. And it, it's really, if you're new into giving over those reins, this is a great course to begin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it helps, like you said, building that autonomy, building that love of learning, you know, because you're choosing things that are going to be fresh and fun and engaging and, and help them get into geography, not as this, you know, dusty old academic discipline, but as something that's interesting and relevant and applies to how they live their lives. I, I think there's just a lot of potential there. The, the need for geographic literacy is so high, people tend not to be geographically literate and it affects how we see the world and how we interact you know with our neighbors and our families and and our shopping choices and like all of these different elements of our lives are impacted by geography and it behooves us to understand it so that when current events pop up we can understand what's going on like there's just there's all of these little tie-ins to every other piece of your curriculum and being able to think geographically and ask geographic questions and make geographic connections, that's just, it's so important. And hopefully North Star is going to be that tool that will help you build the framework for your kids to understand and engage with the world around them. Well, I, I can attest to that hope because I can put on the mama hat for a second and say, you know, this just gave us, and we're finishing this in eighth grade, headed into high school studies, it really was the framework that we hoped it would be 
to plug in an understanding of government and an understanding of um, economics and understanding of history in a way that we had not tied things together before. And when you can understand how all of it impacts another study discipline, it just makes things much more holistic for a student in their learning. So we thank you for that. As a I'm so glad. Well, thank you. And thank you for spending this time chatting with me about North Star. Absolutely. Uh, you want to let people know where they can find it? I'd be glad to. So if you are a homeschool family, Bright Ideas Press did pass the baton uh, to our retail community. We have wonderful retail partners. So we're going to continue working on new curriculum and resources for your family. But if you would um, just head over to your favorite homeschool supplier, um, you'll find North Star there most likely. And if you don't, just give them a buzz and say, hey, I'm really interested in North Star Geography from Bright Ideas Press. If you have any trouble finding it at all, just send us an email, contact at brightideaspress.com or give us a call at the office and we'll steer you in the direction of one of our partners. If, however, you're a teacher or an administrator at a co-op or a, a private school, we would be glad to serve those volume orders directly. We know there are a lot of logistics that go along with that and we want to offer you volume pricing and help you out with classroom licenses. So again, just drop us an email at contact at brightideaspress.com or give us a buzz and we'd be glad to uh, get your classroom going for next year. Fantastic. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Tyler.